So, hello people interested in an exciting topic of software identification. So, the question that should be waking you up now is what software do I have on that machine? What, what software do I have on my laptop? What software is running is in, in my containers? And for me, the answer is sort of clear. I, I run RPM HQ and I know everything, right? Except not always because I may be running some containers from some images that I downloaded from, well, Docker knows where. And uh, I might be running some scripts that I just cloned from some GitHub repositories. So who is asking the question, right? Might be sort of interesting. Uh, when I'm to troubleshoot or debug a problem, uh, I might be interested in the particular versions of libraries, whether they are available or, or whether they are installed or not. Um, I might be scanning for vulnerabilities, so I might be looking for, for a fix for particular CD. Um, or I might not necessarily be interested in the list of RPM packages or the packages on the lowest level. Because if my goal is to just charge a customer for uh, running my product in some cloud somewhere for two hours, uh, the fact that it's the product, whatever the product is, uh, might be the you know, important part. So RPM dash Q might not be enough, unfortunately. Uh, my, I mean, our lives would be much easier, but uh, there are people and systems, or there are people using systems that use different uh, packaging formats, even on Linux. Uh, there are people who deploy their applications just by dropping a zip file somewhere, and uh, their application server will just by magic start to do something. And of course, we might want to, or need to, be able to account for something on higher level than just packages. So when, when things don't seem to be easy and you have multiple standards, what you do, well, you come up with another standard. So uh, SWIT stands for software identification and it's uh, ISO standard and we'll be talking about the one which has 2015 in the name. You might see 2009 mentioned somewhere. That was an older version, not compatible, and I sort of don't care about that. So if you came specifically because uh, what wakes you up at night is that you have something to do with 2009 standard, I probably won't be helpful at all. So, it's an ISO standard, so you cannot read it unless you pay. But, uh, you know, you, you're, not, you're not missing much. Because uh, what, what the text of the standard mostly, what it mostly does, is describe uh, an XML schema definition. So, SWIT is all about XML files within or in a particular XML. XML uh, namespace. The definition of the namespace is this one. So, uh, people who are familiar with XML, where would you go to look for uh, for the schema definition? If I tell you that this is a namespace, but well, you might have experienced that when when you you look at the something looks like URL, like you, you go there and uh, there might be something there or that there is not. And especially if when it has the extension, it looks like there should be something there, and there is. So uh, it is good because on that URL, there is schema definition, but it's for a completely different namespace. Because you know this is a new standard, so uh, it, uh, you, you need to be prepared. And, and, and this is like the entrance, an, an entrance level uh, of, of your ability to, to do SWIT at all. So when, when you want to see the definition of, of the schema, you have to append dash current to URL to actually get the definition for the namespace that we've been talking about. And uh, it's a nice uh, namespace definition. 
it has documentation in it, and the documentation in this XML, which defines the other XML files that we'll be talking about, is sort of mirroring what is in the uh, standard text. So that's why my feeling is that you really don't need to uh, pay to ISO. So this is the way how you sort of tell the uh, XML tools that even if the first one looks like URL, when it is interested about schema definition, it should go to the other URL to fetch it. So we, well, the, the object that we are interested in is a sweet tag. And sweet tag is nothing but a XML file with root element software identity in the XML link space of uh, the sweet. Well, that, that is really fine. By the way, if you have any questions and you're feeling lost, try to, uh, you know, shout or get my attention because the, the more you are lost, the, the happier you will be and that's not my intention. So uh, don't, don't hold your questions until, until the end. So the primary goal or purpose of the suite tag is to install, uh, is to describe install software. It might also describe relationship between software, products, packages, components, and it might also uh, be used to describe like installation media. So uh, if you have uh, some distribution ISO, uh, but primarily it is about what software is installed on this, on this particular machine. So you would like to see a sweet tag, right? So I have a good news. So if you have a Fedora 29, Let's try, try it here. Fedora 29. Uh, in user lib, sweet tech, Fedora project org, we have a sweet tech actually. Is it big enough for you or do you want the font bigger? I can show off to make it bigger. Okay. So it's an XML. It's in the namespace, I promise. Um, it has the root element that I promise. And, you know, when, when you start to look at XML, you might not necessarily immediately see what is important. So, one of the important things is the tag ID, which should be uh, uniquely or generally universally unique identifier of the sweet tag. The standard sort of assumes that you might be using UID, but I like to look at a string and have some clue about what it is about. So sweet text that I create have some meaning, even if you are not supposed to parse that string. You are not supposed to like uh, you know write tools that will split uh, the tag ID itself and say, well, uh, this is Fedora. You are supposed to look at the other attributes in the sweet tag. Um, another interesting or important thing uh, in, and you have things like uh, name and version uh, in the sweet tag, but um, a fairly important thing is a entity uh, tag creator and software creator. So you might, you might be creating sweet tags, identifying software, for software that you did not write or ship. Uh, you, you, you are just creating a sweet tag for something that, that maybe you found uh, laying around on your, on your system. So there's a way to either identify that Fedora project might be both creating and creating the software and the tag, or there might be multiple entities that, that do that. <coughs> um, and there's a bunch of other interesting uh, entries here. Uh, so, one, one thing uh, that you might notice is uh, that there's nothing about uh, files uh, in, in this, or, or about content, right? So, uh, if we look at another example, let me make this a little bit smaller so that I can make it a little bit bigger so that you see the bottom. So, this might be an example sweet tag for, for bash, 
and I gave it um, this tag ID. So you see a pattern. It's like the Fedora project or just reversed and then dot and then Nevra of the RPM package. And it has some, some information, general information. I can say that Fedora project created uh, both the package and the tag. And there can be an evidence of uh, what was maybe found on, on the disk with a list of files and directories and checksums. So now we are getting somewhere, right? Now we are describing not just, well, this is bash, uh, but uh, the content of the package is, is something uh, of an interest. So what other XML uh, namespaces you might encounter when you look at sweet text? Uh, obviously, uh, checksums. There is also a extension for uh, the NIST internal uh, report 8060, which is sort of a guideline for implementing suite. So if you want to read some piece of literature, uh, I might recommend uh, the internal report uh, from NIST. Obviously, NIST is down because of shutdown. So uh, this page loads, but the links to the actual PDF they no longer load, so you'll need to fiddle with archive.org or something or ask me because I have the PDF downloaded, right? Because I'm coming prepared. So um, it talks about, well, the guidelines talk about uh, creating text, creating uh, authoritative and non-authoritative text, how links should work, so what, how, how you are supposed to maybe link things uh, among other and, uh, and so on. So uh, the next thing that you might encounter are XML signatures. So uh, the standard sort of comes and assumes that uh, the content of the street tag will be signed when needed. Um, if you look at the XML uh, street tag, you might be disappointed to not find any signature there. And, uh, but if you look at RAL8 uh, beta that I have here as well in user lips with tag. And now where would you expect the next path? Be? It, it would be redhead.com, right? Because it's not Fedora. Uh, you might find a file which at the bottom has an XML signature and uh, the certificate chain. So we shipped a Switek identifying uh, distribution for both Fedora unsigned and RAL uh, 80 uh, signed. So if you want to look at some examples of Switek, that's, that's where you might want to start. But what if you want to create some Switek like for yourself? Uh, so we have a tool in a copper repo. Copper enable adult on Swift, yes. And if this takes too long, I have another container where it is already installed, so I'm coming prepared. Uh, I've called it RPM to Swift tag. So you see, I've, I've started with RPM because, as I said, if you ask me what I have installed my machine, it's RPM-Q, right? So uh, I started with RPM just to, oh, it's already installed, so sorry, I need to go to this one. To, to, you know, to have the experience for you uh, fully. Uh, fully matching what, what you will see. Uh, DNF install. Attack. It will probably take a little while. So we have a tool uh, called RPM to Sweet Tech, which can take either installed RPM in RPM database or RPM file, a package, and uh, generate a sweet tech for you. So 
which, okay, let's, let's make it, uh, let's live on the edge. Uh, for which of these packages would you like, would you like me to create a sweet tag for you? Esk, sorry? Oh, here, this one. Got it. RPM to sweet tag. Right lips. So we have something. It has a tag ID. As I said, it's fairly important. Uh, we have entity where I'm saying, well, I, I have no idea who created the sweet tag. So uh, the standard order NIST internal report 8060, I'm not sure, says this invalid unavailable is what we probably want there. And we have a list of directories and files. And, and the checksums. So this is pretty cool, right? Uh, there's another sweet tag creeping here. So, but we'll come to it uh, later. So we can also look at uh, the sweet tags that we have on, on our system. So if you've installed RPM to sweet tag, it also comes uh, with sweet queue. It will only find two sweet tags because that's what we have. And, and it's interesting, uh, I didn't tell you that I have the second one here because, well, I, I, I don't need to tell you everything right away. Uh, but we have many more packages installed on, on, in that container, right? So if I run the NF RPM to sweet tag regenerate, what I should get is a list of sweet tags for all the packages that I have. So, it, and it will store it in uh, varlib sweet tag, whatever pass. Uh, you can also generate sweet tags for, if you have a YAM repository, if you just created one uh, using create repo, you can also generate that. And then the DNF plugin can pull it from, from the repository for you. So, if you don't fancy looking at XML, it is also possible to, uh, so we now have many of them, and I can say this, this RPM. Uh, what was the name? So, uh, SQL light lips. I don't know the name. Okay. Uh, I don't have it here. I'm doing something wrong. Uh, pa, 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 pa. What happened? Somebody tell me what happened. Is the name of the package something else? Yes, the name of the package is probably something else. So uh, with dash i, I can display the content of the sweet tag in a more readable form. Um, and I can also, I, I think I also have dump, which dumps it. Because if, when you are working with new standard, you come up with a new format, right, as well. So uh, this is my, my way of displaying XML. But you can, you can also say, say XML. Uh, so uh, one of the things that you might know, notice is that there might be multiple sweet text for a particular package. And it's because. Uh, you can describe links or relationships and one of the relationships is supplemental. So you can have a sweet tag which comes afterwards and says, well, I know there is already a sweet tag describing, for example, Fedora. But I'm telling you that this Fedora also has a component uh, SQLite lips or something like that. And uh, the sweet tag dash i will uh, display it. So if I look at the fe at Fedora right now, so what sweet queue does, it doesn't just display things, uh, you know, in text text format, but, but it also resolves uh, the supplemental tags, and, and the value that came from the supplemental tags will have uh, this marker or the marker is plus. And if you're interested in what the difference is, we can talk about it, uh, about it later. So basically to, to know everything about a particular sweet tag, you need to look at all of them. 
resolve the uh, supplemental tags, and only then you know like what, what the content of the of the suite actually is for for a given set of installed uh, packages or uh, software products on a system. Um, there are some other interesting things about Suite Tech. Well, the, the standard is very large. The uh, 8060 NIST report is more specific. Sometimes it's not very exact and it does not touch some of the issues that, or some of the situations that you might encounter. So for example, you, you probably want to have a way to encode architecture, right, for, for your package. You want to know whether it is uh, x86 for uh, x86 64 or whether it's uh, no arc. Uh, so we used uh, the arc uh, attribute, which um, the standard allows, but the validation to provided by or that the schema allows because there's an access attribute, uh, basically any. Uh, but uh, the validation tool that NIST provides does not does not accept. So. That there are a little confusions in there. So when you want, let's say that you have a system, let's say that you have sweet text, how do you find the sweet text? Like what, what's the location of the sweet text? Uh, the standard seems to assume that you basically scan the whole disk. And then when you find a sweet text, what is next to it is, is the package that you're looking for. To, to be reasonably efficient in you know, enumerating this, enumer enumer as, as I mentioned, you need to basically process all of the sweet text to resolve that supplemental information for any particular one. Uh, we came up with a plan. So we are man with plan and in sweet, sweet text dash D, uh, we propose uh, some links to basically locations that hold sweet text so that for maybe Fedora or Red Hat Price Linux, uh, the way, and, and the standard allows us to do it. They, the standard allows us to define a vendor specific or platform specific way of finding sweet text. So uh, it would be the symlinks in this directory. Uh, things can be uh, signed, so, and I've, I have an option in RPM to sweet text to call uh, XML sex sign. Um, the guidelines around signatures are a little bit confusing. They uh, expect trusted timestamps, but they don't really say how uh, the chain of trust should, should work. So we just ignore that part. Uh, so what, what, what's, what's the plan? Or what are, what are the plans? Uh, I want to be able to uh, finalize the XML namespace used uh, in the DNF repository because Sweet tag defines namespace for a single tag, but not for a collection of tags that I want to basically produce for uh, YAM repository and then make available. Um, I want to basically create a repo which would serve as a place for people to, for basically me and us uh, publishing what our recommendations or best practices or decisions, design decisions have been, and for other people to maybe comment on it via pull request issues or so. Um, we hope that NIST would serve as that place or Tech Vault would serve as you know, that, that place for people to um, show what, what they have and, and maybe discuss uh, what their next day should be, but uh, it did not happen. So uh, I'll, I'll create a repo there under GitHub slash suite text that I've registered. My biggest problem is that I, I don't know what the name of the repo should be. So you know, naming is hard. and. Uh, I made a decision about the, the tag IDs uh, using Nevra, but for this one, I, it needs a little bit of time. Uh, we have a DNF plugin. I need to write a libdnf plugin because apparently having, well, you, you need to implement things twice in DNF world. Um, I'd like to get the tools that you just saw to, to Fedora 30. Uh, and um, I probably need to add signature validation and having a way to show uh, not just uh, the tree of supplemental text, but also you know other relationships like, like components. But the problem is that to show you components of Fedora, I first need to resolve the supplemental text to find the final information about what the components of Fedora actually are. So it's like multi-stage multi process. Uh, 
Um, and I also want to make it possible to update uh, Suitex from the YAML repository if you already have the packages installed, not just during uh, installation. We welcome people who have any opinion about this because uh, you know, we, we try to read the standard, we try to read the documentation, we try to implement something, but you know, other people might have other use cases. Um, if you feel like coding or you have a student who feels like coding, definitely adding something like dev to SwitchTech or zip to SwitchTech or directory to SwitchTech might be uh, useful. I might get to doing it eventually anyway, but I'll, I'll be happy to review a patch. Um, here's a list of some of the places you might want to check out. And we don't have time for any questions, but I take three. So, <laughs> yes, so this seems to be used mostly in a supply chain scenario where you're dealing with trusted uh, data. It has been used with untrusted materials, such as for the purposes of cataloging, uh, I don't know, viruses, malware. Oh, uh, well, if you don't care about trusted, you don't sign it. So if, if it's not signed, if you, you are okay about the evidence, you can generate the suite tech on the machine, not have it signed by the vendor, by Red Hat or Federal Project or anybody, and you can use it by other tools that might want to look at that information, like from so on, like maybe other tools. Yes. In fact, you can go a step further, and you can counter sign yourself the tags that you care about in your own environment and have your own attestation on top of the vendor's one. So you, you have a lot of options for going down that out as as deep as you want. Or if you just care about having a label, you don't have to have, have any sign at all. I mean, it depends on what you're going to use it for. I mean, it's really the same as a standard if it was R or Charlie D, but you don't need to have any part of it to get some value out of it. Depends on what you So that counted as two questions, so the third one last one. Are there any plans for having uh, for, uh, for paid IPI or the modules, a detection and creation of Swiss text? Uh, we're hoping that the OpenSCAP team uh, will be implementing basically processing of Swiss text because the SCAP of Arnold Street sort of either requires or asks or strongly asks them to do so. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'll be around if you have any more questions, but I don't want to hold you up.